Okay, so uh, what's the name of this molecule? Methanol. Methanol. That's right. We know it's an alcohol, and it's got one carbon. So this is methanol. All right. Um, now, how could we, let's say, turn this into this? This is what's called a carbonyl. Have you guys heard that term yes. used? All right. So I've turned the alcohol carbon into a carbonyl carbon over here. What is it? Well, we would have to tell me what that means. Carbonyl. Carbonyl is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen. A carbonyl is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen. And there's many different types of carbonyls. Uh, this is an aldehyde. It's one type of carbonyl. Uh, so uh, anytime you have a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen, that's a carbonyl. The particular type we have here is an aldehyde. What did we just do here then? An oxidation or a reduction? Reduction. Now, what's the difference? An oxidation is when you form more bonds to oxygen. And a reduction is when you lose bonds to oxygen. Are those terms that you've been using in, in your class, oxidation and reduction? Yes. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> oxidation is when you're forming more bonds to oxygen or fewer bonds to hydrogen. must be the reverse. So a reduction must be fewer bonds to oxygen and or more bonds to hydrogen. It's not too hard to remember this because I think oxidation sounds like more bonds to oxygen, right? If you're oxidizing, that should sound like more bonds to oxygen. And then you kind of figure out everything else. Uh, more bonds to oxygen or fewer bonds to hydrogen is oxidation, and then the reverse is reduction. Okay, by the way, that's the OCHEM definition, um, or the bio definition. In general chemistry, we learn a different definition for oxidation and reduction in terms of loss and gain of electrons. Yeah, I hated that one. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually is less important for OCHEM, but you should actually still know it. So let's just briefly say what that is. It actually shouldn't be that hard. You guys have heard of Leo the Lion, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as you know, Leo Zosker, I think this pretty much solves our problem. But do you guys remember what these stand for? Yeah, electron oxidation. Electron. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. Leo the lion goes grr. Leo the lion goes grr. That's the is usually the, with the loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. So, oxidation would also mean that you're losing electrons, and reduction would also mean that you're gaining electrons. Does that make sense? OK. Um, you should know this. You might, you might actually need this occasionally in OCHEM. But when in doubt, this is the key definition to focus on. Because we're usually not really counting the electrons here so much. But it's easy to see whether, where the oxygens and the uh, hydrogens are going. But Leo the Lion goes through is definitely a good uh, mnemonic there. OK. Um, so anyway, was this an oxidation or a reduction? Oxidation. Because the carbon started with one bond to oxygen. I should I say, are we oxidizing or reducing the carbon? Well, the carbon started with one bond to oxygen, and now it has two bonds to oxygen. So we need to know what's the reagent that would allow us to oxidize uh, this methanol and turn it into this aldehyde. Uh, SN1 or E1? Now it turns out that this is not going to be an SN1 or an E1 uh, reaction. It's a brand new reaction. So oxidation and reduction is a brand new reaction. It's not the same as SN1 or SN2. This is a brand new reaction. Um, you can see that because um, you know SN1 and SN2 never made a double bond. 
and E1 and E2 made double bonds between carbons, not between a carbon and an oxygen. So this doesn't look like any of the other reactions. So have you guys learned about PCC? Yeah. Okay, well then that's what we should use here. And the chromium. Which one do you know if it's better, chromium-based reagent? Like the mm -hmm. CRO3? Now, pyridinium, uh, this actually stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. So it actually has, a, this, they're all chromium-based. Okay. All of the oxidizing agents that are commonly used are chromium-based. So this is PCC, uh, a common oxidizing agent. Um, so, uh, now notice what happens in order to oxidize this. We had to break this carbon-hydrogen bond so we could replace it with a new carbon-oxygen bond. Every time you oxidize something, you have to break a carbon-hydrogen bond. Well, not only that, but we broke the other, the oxygen-hydrogen bond. That's true. That is true. That turns out not to be as interesting, but that's right. Uh, it turns out to be more interesting than we have to break this carbon-hydrogen bond. Okay. Um, however, then, um, this might oxidize again. If this oxidized again, it would look like this. If this aldehyde oxidized again, it would look like this. Now we could break this carbon-hydrogen bond and put in a new oxygen over here. It turns out that this is the way this would oxidize. Notice that this now has three bonds to oxygen, so it's definitely oxidized more. And where do they get the new O prime? Ah, well, this would happen if we used a different uh, chromium reagent. If we had used, say, um, I don't know which ones you guys are covering, but... H2O and chromate trioxide? So, uh, let's see. The ones that are commonly used chromate, are, say... Chromate anhydride. <laughs> have you guys seen this? Pretty much anything but pyridinium chlorochromate, anything but PCC, is going to take us all the way to here. Those, are the, those two and PCC are the only common ones? Uh, th anything that's got chromium in it is probably going to be an oxidizing agent here. These are the common ones. Uh, if you have something else in your notes that you want you to know, then uh, you'd have See, that. Well, they have CHCl2 when they use PCC. No, that's oh, yeah, that's like the solvent. Yeah, I don't know. All the rest are in H2O. Right. Right. Okay. I thought we wanted it to be one thing. Okay. So uh, that would take us to here. Now, at this part of the course, what do we usually want to make? We want to make aldehydes. We want to avoid over oxidizing and making so this, which is called a carbon. Well, if we use this reagent, we'll make this, we'll make this and then we'll stop. Whereas if we use these reagents, we'll over-oxidize and get this. So there's two, pop, two different paths. Here. How do we know if we over-oxidize or not? Uh, if you use these reagents, you're going to over- Oh, it just is known. Yeah, okay. that's right. Because then you get two O's. Uh, so in a way, you can think of this as a milder oxidizing agent. So these reagents would take us to here. PCC would take us to here. Okay. Um, so uh, that gives us uh, that, and this is usually what we want at this part of the class. So usually we're going to want to use PCC to be on the safe side. Uh, this would be thought of as uh, over oxidizing again. So there's no like mechanism to draw, so it's known that when you add it. They, cover, uh, they kind of cover the mechanism for this in the textbook, but I don't think you'd be responsible for that in the course. So you just know that that here you just memorize the reactions. That's right. You should pretty much just memorize. Uh, this is a case where you shouldn't worry about the mechanisms. That's right. Is there a lot of them where you have to memorize? Reactions you just have to memorize. Actually, most of the reactions in the course, you're supposed to know the mechanisms. This course is mainly about mechanisms. This mechanism doesn't have too much insight in it, though, so you, I don't think your instructor would want you to know that mechanism. So we'll just learn the starting materials in the product here. Okay. 
Um, all right, so anyway, this shows us how to oxidize. So the main point here, and here's something else we can do with alcohols that I didn't mention before. We've seen how we can, uh, something else we can do with an alcohol is oxidize it and turn it into an aldehyde. Right? Okay. Um, so that gives us this. So now it would be interesting to know if there is some way to go in reverse. <coughs> some way to go this way. What, what would this be, this reaction, an oxidation or a reduction? Reduction. <coughs> so notice this left-hand side of the board is the reduced end, and this right-hand side is the oxidized end. So here uh, we'd be going this way. Um, well, uh, remember that a reduction, you need to gain hydrogens. That's one good way to reduce. So we need a source of H minus, because that would also bring in some electrons. Remember that reduction is GER gain of electrons. And if they're brought in by a hydrogen, that would really match our idea. So we need a source of H minus. And in this course, you guys have probably seen two sources of H minus, sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. 